Good morning guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be taking you through a full glutes slash legs workout with me. Um, normally I have two leg days a week so I'll have one on a Monday, one on a Friday and then I'll be split up into hamstrings and glutes focus and quads and glutes focus. Because the glutes are such a big muscle they can take quite a bit of stress so I do train glutes twice a week, sometimes even train them three times a week if I have the time to do like an extra bit at the end of my full body day and um, a bit of strength training then so i'm doing it from my home gym which is basically just a little setup we've got in the garage so this is what i use to do my hip thrust off of which is currently just two bumper plates stacked on top of each other with a pillow but we're getting a new one so that we'll have like a proper setup and then we've got a bench a barbell and 90 kilograms in weight to go on the barbell um, we've also got some little dumbbells as well down here so yeah to start off with we're doing some glute activation that's always how I start it's not necessarily that these exercises these exercises help to grow your glutes but they do help to get the mind to muscle connection so you can kind of feel not where your glutes are because you know where they are but kind of feel on how to engage them properly as you go into your workouts then when you start doing hip thrusts or start doing your compound movements you can feel it more um, so I normally start off with all my compound movements and then accessory exercises go at the end normally two to three compound movements at the start and then everything else is accessories my compound movements stay the same every single week and it's just the bits at the end that change so let's get into it
so now the glute activation is done, we're going into main compound movements. So main compound movements of today's exercise, we've got hip thrusts, RDLs, and sumo deadlifts. So I'm gonna start off with the sumos, and then I'm gonna go into the RDLs, and then go into my hip thrusts, only because working my way down to the floor is helpful because the next exercise I've got after that is single leg hip thrusts. So it makes sense to come back down, come down to the floor, <clears throat> get the set up right for hip thrusts. Okay, so I'll talk through some pointers of how to set up this exercise um, and how to move your body and how basically how it works whilst I'm doing the exercise. So I just set the camera up and I'll be back. Right, here we go. So this is the setup for a sumo deadlift. Just Olympic bar, 20 kilogram bar with however much weight on it you need. Uh, I would suggest putting some big plates on it to start off with, only because it means you don't have to take it from the floor. Taking it from the floor is a lot more difficult than taking it from however many inches off the floor that this gives you. Um, especially if you have problems with like hip flexibility and getting down that low, this is a good option to help you lift it off. And even then you can do it off plate, so you can put plates underneath it help lift it off the floor even more. Um, in terms of the stance, you go feet nice and wide. Um, I'd probably say a, like an extra step outside of shoulder width. You definitely want to be above uh, outside of shoulder width. Um, and then hands will come in in the middle of the bar. I do a mixed grip, so one hand under, one hand over. You can do it however feels comfortable. <clears throat> then your bum is dropping down, keeping your back straight, making sure that your shoulders shrug back a little bit so that you're not hunched over the bar like this. Pulling the bar in towards your shins and then driving your heels into the floor and pulling, making sure you're pulling through your glutes as you stand up. So instead of sending your bum up first and then bringing your chest up, it kind of all happens in one motion. It's not one than the other. It kind of bum down, engage your shoulders, and pull. So you just stand up, but you're in the particular stance you're in. You can push a lot through your glutes when doing this. Reps wise, I'm probably going to go for 12 at this weight, and then increase the weight, drop the reps a little bit. And um, when I was going for strength, and I was lifting quite heavy with these. <clears throat> I was aiming for like three to four reps and having a good two minute rest in between sets. It just depends what your goals are. If you're aiming for hypertrophy, eight to 12 reps, about 70% of your one rep max will be fine. This is kind of just a warm up set. And then I'll do three working sets. Let's get to it. exercise up is RDLs. I'm putting a little bit of a deficit on it which basically just means putting my feet on a raised platform so that I can get deeper into the movement so I can kind of drop below floor level and um, because obviously the weights are quite big like the plate weights and um, I can get down to the bottom of the movement quite easily when I've got them on so I always put a bit of a deficit on so I can get lower into the movement feel a bit more of a pull in my hamstrings and um, for this I'm probably only going to do three sets at this weight which is 15 60 um i'll do three sets at 60 see how i feel after that but because of the deficit it does make it quite a bit more difficult that's why i'm only doing three sets right I'll explain to you guys how to do these so rdl set up if you're in deficit stand on your raised surface feet shoulder width apart a little bit of bending your knees and the idea of this movement is that it's a hip hinging motion you're not bending your knees and um, you're not sitting your bum down 
you're having your knees slightly bent and then you're sending your hips back and you're trying to keep the bar as close to you as possible the whole time so it should stay at least over the centre of your foot over your shoelaces the whole time keeping your back nice and straight again remembering to engage your back to brace your shoulders keep your core nice and tight this is why it's a compound exercise because although it has a really big focus on hamstrings you have to brace everything else to do this movement so i'll just demonstrate so hands this time are going just a bit wider than your feet how we perform an RDL. We're going to do it another two sets of that weight. Um, I also do find it helpful when doing these to use my figure of eight straps. So basically put them around your wrists, wrap that bit under the bar, put it around your wrists again. It just helps with your grip strength. So it kind of takes some of the strain off your grip puts it the weight through your wrists instead like your forearm so that it's easier to lift you're not putting as much strain on your hands Woo! it's hot today okie dokie it's time for the last compound movement which is hip thrusts so with hip thrusts recently i've been doing them on both of my leg days one day i'll focus on going heavy as i can the other one i'll focus on time under tension lower weight keeping it the movement quite slow um, and maybe doing like little half reps at the top and um, so that's what we're doing today we're focusing keeping it at this weight so 60 kilograms doing probably 10 reps and then really focusing on that last pelvic tilt at the top probably doing five reps with just the little pelvic tilt at the top of the movement and um, probably do three sets and then I have one more exercise to do these, ex th these like compound movements take up quite a bit of time, so I've already been training for 34 minutes and I've only done two exercises, so if, if you're looking at building glutes, it's more about the time under tension of the muscles and also taking a good rest period to be able to lift as much as you can when you're doing these compound movements. It's not about getting it in and getting it done, you need extra time to be able to do these properly. So, hip thrust time, let's go. Okay, so with hip thrusts, make sure you have a barbell pad. This is the only thing I use this for. I don't use it for squats because if you use it for squats, you're going to push your head forward and misalign your spine while you're doing squats, and it's not what you want. If you if the bar is sat on the correct place on your back, then it shouldn't hurt. It should be sat not on your neck, on the bony part of your neck slightly lower down and um, almost going down into mid back range that's why it's called a back squat not a neck squat there you go okay so hip thrusts you want your back platform that you're lifting off so your bench or your box or whatever it is to be coming up to just under your knee this is slightly too low for me that's why we're getting a proper box for it soon um, so you want it to be just above, just below your knee. Okay, so you roll the weight onto you. Make sure you pad the right way around. So what you want is for your the edge of the platform you're lifting off to be sitting just underneath your shoulder blades, um, and then you've got a hip pad in the middle of your hips making sure there's equal length of bar on each side so you don't lift it and tilt one way or the other and then you want to push drive through your heels to push it up when you come up you want to come up to 90 degrees at the top of the movement i'm just going to move the camera around so you can see what i'm talking about so you bring walk your knees in as far as you can or feet in as far as you can here and then you push it up your knees are at 90 degrees for your body 
flowing all the way back down until your bum hits the ground if you're on a lower platform. If you're on a higher one, then you can do it until you reach the, um, almost like a sticking your bum out on the bottom. Um, and then push it all the way up to the top, tucking your bum under. And For the last five reps, we're just doing the little movement at the top, which is the pelvic tilt at the top, so a posterior pelvic tilt, just flipping your hips up and forward, almost like tucking your bum underneath. Um, also, another thing I forgot to mention, making sure that your chin stays tucked to your chest. The only thing that's moving is from your rib cage down. You don't want to be swinging your whole body back and forth. It's literally just underneath your ribs. So we're doing down halfway, and do the little tilt at the top. Okay, so next exercise is single leg hip thrusts. So to do these, you need to set up like this. So you need a landmine, press, um, and then you need to put your pad on the end of the bar when it's already loaded. You need your platform, bench, box, whatever it's gonna be. And basically, you then, sit with your back on the box, have one leg on the pad, so that all the weight's going through one leg, um, and then swap halfway through. So, I will film the setup. It's exactly the same cues for lifting as a hip thrust, except it's only through one leg instead of two. So all the weight is going through this leg, this one. This one can be up in the air, it can be on the floor in front of you. As long as it's not doing any of the work, it's fine. Again, you're pushing up to 90 with this leg, but driving all of the weight through that hip. Just readjust the pad because it's coming out. Right. Here you go. So push it up. All the weight is in that leg. There's nothing on this one. I'll also show you an alternative to doing it with the bar, which is actually a lot easier to set up. So I'll just show you this now. Because it means you don't have to move the bar around. So same thing with your box or bench or whatever it is you're using. But instead using a dumbbell. So you put the landmine single leg hip thrust. Doing it with a dumbbell instead. So the dumbbell goes on whichever leg you want to be putting the weight through. Same thing again, coming up to 90. It's more difficult to balance, and obviously, you don't have the pad either. Um, so it's, it is a little bit more difficult in terms of trying to keep the weight on, but you can hold it at the side here. It's not going to make a difference to it. I'd normally do that for three to four sets right at the end of my session, um, 10 reps on each leg. And that is the end of my hamstring and glute focus leg day. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And if you have any questions at all about what exercises to do to help build certain muscles or anything, just put it in the description, in the description, in the comments below. Um, also, I link my Instagram in the description, so if you guys could go and follow that, that would be really great. I post lots of content on there about different workouts and nutrition every day, things that I'm eating, things like little snacks that are really low calories that you can have while you're dieting, and just in general, stuff about health and fitness. Uh, let me know what you want to see next, because I enjoy other people's ideas, because I don't have many of my own. Um, and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.